Uh, I first came to Oskaloosa in 1982, um, a newlywed. My husband was a college student, came to play basketball for Leon Richardson at William Penn College at the time. We were here just the two years that he was junior and senior, and uh, I worked for an attorney, Charlie Williams, who was the oldest practicing attorney in Iowa at the time. Uh, so I worked for him during those two years, and when John graduated, then we moved back to my home state of Indiana, where we had a small business, and um, my, was near my family then. In 1990, actually late 89, John had an offer to, to come back to him as an employee to join the staff at the advancement office with alumni relations and fundraising and development. And so we have been here ever since. He came in January of 90 and, and our daughter Katie and I came along in, in March that year. Been here ever since. All right. Yeah. And the, the lead off question I've asked everybody that's running is, why would you want to do this? Why would you want to do this? Yeah. Um, to be fully honest, it wasn't my idea. <laughs> But when word got out that Aaron Versteg was not going to run again for First Ward, which is the northwestern part of town, um, then I was approached by, by some friends in the community, some friends and community leaders, asking if I would consider that. Um, I said, well, I won't say no today, <laughs> so let me, let me think about this. So I did a lot of thinking, talking with my husband, talking with other people, other council members, other people around town. and. Um, felt like with, with some of the, the things I've experienced already professionally and in my volunteer work in the community that I probably had pretty good preparation for the role and um, I also feel a lot of responsibility. When you have a good community and you want it to keep moving in the right direction, then we need to be on board and, and help move it in that direction. Okay. Yeah. And so you've, you've, you've had a, a wide experience of, of different opportunities mm -hmm. in Oscar Lucet. Mm -hmm. You, you have a unique experience because your husband's position with the university. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you hear, you know, how do people, how does Oskaloosa retain those best and brightest? How would you mm -hmm. go about, because that's all part of this whole economic development, that's right. how do we retain those, those young people? You know, I have seen a lot of, of students who have enjoyed their experience so much here in Oskaloosa that they, that they do stay and they raise their families here. Um, Sometimes they come from a larger metro area and they find that a little different pace of life is something that, that they enjoy and they want to get away from the rat race. Um, the friendliness of the community is something that, that they feel really good about. And so we just have to make sure that there, there are good opportunities for them too. And a lot of them have had employment opportunities here in town and so we're, we're very happy to keep them here. Okay. When you're looking at economic development, we have those young people that mm -hmm. are staying. They have the opportunity to stay. Mm -hmm. How do we how do we build upon that? Then how do we make more opportunity for Oskaloosa mm -hmm. and and Penn students and, mm -hmm. and those others that want to come to Oskaloosa? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I think that um, once we once we th they come here and they start to experience what we have to offer, then we need to make sure that that their needs continue to be met. And I think there have been a lot of the good things happening here as far as development of recreation opportunities. Our medical facilities have improved. Our schools are strong. I think we have a lot of good things going on and um, engaging them community-wide too, and not just in, by, by their employers. We're fortunate too, I think, that a lot of our employers are very community-minded and they like to get their, their employees out and involved in the community. We have a young professionals group and so some of them get engaged that way too. So I, I do think that those opportunities are there and we just need to make sure that those needs are being met and, and making sure that we're communicating with them. Okay. Yeah. And there's, we'll probably start with some of the really, I don't want to say mundane, but those Rudy, important things Rudy, that yeah. government does. So mm -hmm. we have infrastructure. I mean, mm -hmm. that's the part that everybody you know, relates to. If there's a pothole on their road, then city government's not <laughs> doing their job. So right. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about your, your thoughts and vision for the infrastructure within Oskaloosa and, and how, how mm -hmm. do we pay for roads, how do we, mm -hmm. how do we pay for this, uh, the sewer system that's, yeah. you know, so mm -hmm. a little bit of 
your thoughts on that? Right, and and so you know, I am new to city government. I have a lot of experience with nonprofits, but but not with government per se. So I've made an effort to get out and, and meet with a lot of our city officials and start getting a better understanding and, and um, get me up to speed on a lot of these issues. Infrastructure, we're, we're not a new community. I mean, we've been around for a long time and fortunate that we are, are still here. Um, but a lot of our infrastructure is very old and my understanding is that particularly our wastewater system uh, or sewer systems, they have, they have to be, those facilities have to be upgraded. They, by by law, so we're going to have to bite the bullet on that. Um, probably with the expense that that it's going to require, we'll have to do some bonding for that. So I I feel with the the exposure I've had to city council so far with the meetings I've attended, that these are um, people are very careful about how money is being spent to make sure that we're getting the most for our money and doing it in a very practical, um, planned out process. Um, and so I'm confident that it'll be done in the best way possible, but it, it's an expense that we're going to have to face. As far as the roads are concerned, then too, we do have the local option tax that was renewed, and 75% of that will go to the new recreation and child care center, but 25% is to go to infrastructure, so that'll help offset that a little bit too. Okay. Um, and those rules that generated or that made the city of Oshkaloosa update their, their sewer mm -hmm. system came from that with the Department of Natural Resources. And mm -hmm. If you were to be able to engage them, I mean, you can't now because you're coming into a position, but if theoretically, mm -hmm. if you were able to engage them and say, um, these kinds of rules are, are expensive for mm -hmm. citizens and for cities, how can we better work or work with you to make sure that we're not, you know, causing too much of a burden for our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And getting behind the eight ball. And I think it may be a situation, um, there, I, I have some more homework to do on this, but it may be one of those things where we haven't done updates for, for a lengthy period of time because we didn't want to raise taxes or put a burden on, on the people. And now here we are, we're in a situation where we don't have an option that has to be done. Um, but certainly if we can um, communicate better going down the road and make sure too that we're looking at the long term and not just just in the immediate and what needs to be done now. I think that we have to do that. And another large project, 75 cents of the new local option mm -hmm. sales tax is going to the early childhood development. How do you see that as part of a key for Oskaloosa and, and moving forward as part of this whole revitalization or, mm -hmm. or keeping the community? Mm -hmm. Well, again, you know, when you think about the different aspects, when we have, we want to keep our community members here and we want to be attractive to, to incoming um, people that are moving in for jobs or whatever else, we want to make sure that the community has that broad base of services. And child care is a big issue. I actually have worked in child care too. When my daughter was young, I wanted to be able to stay home with her, but had to have some, some kind of income. And so for two years in Indiana and then two years here, I offered child care in my home. So I'm really, um, and then also I worked for the Extension Office as the Child Care Resource and Referral Coordinator when that program first came into the community. So I'm really aware of, of those needs and it's, it's kind of, it's a, it's a tough situation because a lot of the parents' income goes toward child care and yet child care workers don't get paid very well, frankly. So um, there's a real fine line there to walk. But having that quality child care is so important for the whole family to have a good experience and to know that your children are safe and that they're being, um, well, I don't know, the educated is exactly the right word, but, but you know, helping them in their development uh, in, that, in that sense. You know, we need to make sure that those facilities are good. If I had a young family coming into town, I'd want to make sure that those, those services were available. And for mm -hmm. economic development wise, mm -hmm. businesses, yeah, that's absolutely. one of their first questions they'll sure. come in and they'll say, what kind of child care is available that's for right. employees? That's right. So, so that continued development is important. I think it's very important too. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, when we moved here, I thought the, the YMCA was such a, uh, a blessing to this community. I grew up not, not, I have to admit, I don't know how to swim. <laughs> I didn't have any facilities around. I guess there was a creek we, you know, some kids went and learned to swim in, but that was not me. But um, so we immediately got my daughter into swimming lessons at the Y so that um, if 
there came a situation she could save herself because I wasn't going to be able to save her. And um, but yeah, we know too that if there's a situation where the the facilities again they're they're old and and lacking in some ways. And so having a new facility uh, like uh, similar to the Y Recreation Center is going to be important to us. This whole conversation took part well before you decided that you were going to be part of the council. Mm -hmm. So we'll ask you <clears throat> your thoughts about the regional airport kind of going forward and because you're going to you're going to inherit mm -hmm. where it is at this point in time. So kind of give me your thoughts about the air airport for you. Is it a necessary project and do you support it? Mm -hmm. um, you're right that that the um, the major decisions about the airport have already been been made. Um, there, I know there's an issue between the city and the county now as far as the agreement that was struck uh, previously. Um, I have met with uh, the airport commission again, you know, to try to get up to speed on, on the issues and where the where uh, possible problems lie or what the objections might be that some people have. Um, everything that I see is is positive, you know, with the exception that there may be people reluctant to sell, and I think that's that's the tough spot of it, you know. Um, I was kind of surprised to learn that some of the owners are actually eager to sell. They're, they're ready to, to have the transaction. And I think we don't see that part of it when we're driving down 163 and see a lot of those signs uh, opposing the airport. But for the economic development of the community, um, I think that it, it is important. Um, it's not just one or two businesses or, or individuals that are going to benefit from it. I think that it's, it is going to benefit all of the community. Um, and there again, when you talk about economic development, if we want to bring new companies in, that's going to be another uh, benefit that they'll have. And I have a couple more minutes left, so I'll, uh, okay. <clears throat> I'll ask, I've asked every candidate so far, this position requires a person often to have a vision of the future. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so if you have a vision for Oskaloosa for 10 years, 25 years down the road, what would you like to see that be? Mm -hmm. Um, I see a lot of really good things happening in the community. I've mentioned some of those already, but you know the the um, appearance of the community is also improving. W whether that's you know getting rid of the sign clutter that we've had and new wayfinding signs, I'm excited for those to be installed in the next uh, several weeks here. The facade project downtown, um, just making it a more attractive place because we know there are a lot of wonderful things here in, in Oskaloosa, but for a newcomer they may not see those right away. You know, once they start interacting with people, then I think they feel, feel good about the, the sense of community that, that we have here in Oskaloosa. So I think though, if we can improve the tax base by more businesses, more individuals living here in Oskaloosa, so that we have more resources to make sure that our infrastructure is kept up where it needs to be and making the improvements along the way. And we have to, we have, to have a, a good plan for that so that we stay on top of it and, and not get into a situation like we are now, sometimes where, where um, the expense is huge because of deferred maintenance. The codes have been talked about as, mm -hmm. as a hindrance that maybe the city's not moving forward because there's a burdensome code. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see yourself maybe sitting down, taking a look at that, talking with people, say, is this something that we need to evaluate to help Oskaloosa grow, or, or is it right? And people, are, this is just something people are going to have to get used to. Mm -hmm. Well, and the issue has been raised about the codes and whether they're outdated or too complicated. And so, certainly, there's no harm in, in, and I think we should take a look at that. And you know, I don't know whether that's that's accurate or not because I don't have any experience with that. But I think we do need to look at that and. And uh, if there are changes that need to be made, then by all means, let's, let's do that. Make sure that we're not uh, creating barriers to, to building or, or whatever else, you know, so that we can continue to grow. Yeah. And one of those things that, you know, you're going to be new. Mm -hmm. um, are, you, are you nervous about, about that? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, that's a huge, huge, huge thing to take on as... You know, as as a person that I mean, you were you were a volunteer, but mm -hmm. city council is can be a lot of work. Right? Is that something mm -hmm. you're a little nervous about? Mm -hmm. I'm really not. Um, I've talked with with the council members, and they've shared you know uh, their experience and how much time that they they have had to put into this uh, needed to. Um, I I am you know fortunate that I'm not employed right now. 
I, I guess I'm fortunate in that sense that I have, have the option not to be. And so I do have a little more flexibility in my time and that's why I've been able to, to do what I've been doing now and getting out and meeting with people and, and trying to get a greater understanding of, of some of the issues that we're facing. Um, so I'm not concerned about that. The more I talk to people too, the more comfortable I am with my upcoming role uh, on the city council. Um, I, certainly I was a, a little, I thought, oh, I, I hope I've made the right decision here, but, but I, like I say, I'm feeling more and more comfortable and confident, uh, especially you know, as people kind of share their encouragement with me that, um, that I think it's something I'm going to, I think I'll enjoy the experience. My, uh, what I have viewed with, with the council meetings that I've gone to, seems like the people work well together, not always in 100% agreement, and I think that's good. We don't need a rubber stamp council. Um, so we'll you know, discuss the issues and come to consensus and make those decisions that, that will benefit the community. So I'm looking forward to that. Well, good. Yeah. Do you have a personal, I mean, we, we briefly touched on it, but do you have a personal, this, was, this is a wish list, this is, okay. these, are, these are things like, you know, would you, would you plant or have you know, power lines that are all underground? Is there something that, you know, <laughs> you sure. yourself, if, you were, if yeah. you were able to lead it, these are the things that I would want to get done. Mm -hmm. I think we've all driven into towns who that, that you just think, oh, wow, this is really pretty. And so I'd love for people to have that experience as they drive into Oscars and say, wow, this is a really nice looking town. They take care of things here and, and looks like they really care about their community. So, and I think we have a lot of those, those things um, being planned. Uh, the South D uh, design now, that's going to be something that we'll be working on next year and that's going to look completely different than other things. We'd love to get the power lines buried all along A Avenue. That's a very expensive project. So um, we'll have to take that a step at a time too. So a lot of those things um, we will have to do as, as opportunity is there for us. Uh, the comprehensive plan has been brought up a couple of times, at least to me, that it's been a number of years. I think it was maybe 2000 when the comprehensive plan was written. So we probably need to be looking at that again, you know, and, and updating that and, and set a regular time to update that um, so that we can uh, share that vision with others and, and be gathering ideas from our community as well. I hope that the lines of communication, people feel like that, that those are open. Uh, I certainly am open to, I'm, I'm a good listener. I try to always have an open mind and, and see everyone's point of view on things because there are things that I'm not going to think of because it's out of my experience. But to have that communication line open so that we can hear from the citizens and, and know what their concerns are and what their vision is and, and hopes for the community too. Yeah, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of let you have free range here a little bit. Cause okay. There's always things that I have in mind that mm -hmm. I wanna talk about and I always ask candidates, There's, I'm sure there's talking mm -hmm. points that every candidate goes, I really hope you get to talk about this because oh, mm -hmm. do you have any of those particular subjects that we might not have stepped on yet that mm. you, would, you would like to talk about? Um, public safety is something else people, of course we have concern about that. We, the world is changing and we need to and want to feel safe in our communities. Um, I've met with police chief already too and talked about any concerns that they, they might have and things that are happening in the community. And I feel like we've, we've got an excellent staff as far as our fire and our, and our police departments and doing the best that they can with limited resources too. There again, it kind of goes back to our tax base and what, what do we have? If we had more money, we could, we could have more officers. Um, but in the meantime, we have to make sure that we give them the tools and the, and the training that they need to make sure they are safe and they're able to help keep us safe too. Uh, so that's one thing, but um, I think just, um, is we are kind of a quaint uh, community. I've said oftentimes that, that you know, Oskaloosa is a little town in rural Iowa and we could have dried up and blown away a long time ago, but we haven't. And instead I see that we're progressing and, and we're adding to, to the, the amenities that we have here and making it a good community, uh, good people. A lot of comments, you know, we, we see sometimes uh, visitors come and they have a, such a great experience and then maybe they'll they're right back and, and share some of their experiences with us and they really enjoyed being here and look forward to coming back again. So we want to make sure that that's the kind of experience that not only visitors have, but the people who live here. All 
right. And, and now I would normally ask the other candidates uh -huh. why people should vote for them versus the other. <laughs> but you don't have to worry about that in this case. Well, I still would like for people to vote for me. Um, and I've said to, if, even though there's not another name next to mine on the ballot, unless somebody chooses to write in, but um, I still would appreciate that, mark, that ballot being marked because I take that as a message of encouragement um, for me and, and give me just a little more um, oomph in my <laughs> as I begin my service. Okay. Yeah.